This is for the ethics review class at Parker University. Sometimes chiropractors graduate to start their own practices, and it can be difficult for them to select and supervise and discipline employees to run their practice effectively. They may have little, if any, experience as managers. In fact, many of them have little experience in working in a workplace in a typical professional office environment. Uh, because of that, I think it's important for you to remember first that the employees you select are the face of your practice. When your patients think about your business, they're going to think about your employees. So here's just a few CEOs, Herb Kelleher from Southwest Airlines, Mark Zuckerberg, Henry Ford, of course, Bill Gates and Paul Allen. Those faces will always be associated with their business because that's what they did. And the business itself is reflected in their personalities, in the, their appearance, in the way they conduct themselves. Just kind of a few quick thoughts or fun thoughts on employees. Uh, most people like hard work, particularly when they are paying for it. It's funny how someone's perspective changes whether they are an employer or an employee. I think Henry Ford had an important insight. It's not the employer who pays the wages. Employers only handle the money. It's the customer who pays the wages. As you develop your chiropractic practice and you work with employees, you ought to teach them that it's the patients who are the source of money, not necessarily you, and it's the patients they need to keep happy. Tom Peters said the magic formula that successful businesses have discovered is to treat customers like guests and employees like people. Treat your employees fairly, listen to them, respect them, trust them, and you will get the best possible performance out of them, and they will be happy to stay with you longer and longer. Delegation. Lots of reasons to delegate tasks to employees. Certainly one obvious reason is, is when a doctor can delegate to an employee, it helps to free up the doctor's time. It also helps to reduce the doctor's stress by having somebody else there to help with the uh, patient care and the flow of patients or making appointments or answering the phone. Whatever it is, it helps to make the doctor's life a little bit easier. And it helps the doctor to be more productive at doing the things that only the doctor can do. It's also a good idea to delegate tasks to employees to help the employee learn new skills. Uh, part of job satisfaction, probably the most important source of job satisfaction, is that trust from the employer. Uh, I think a lot of employers make the mistake of thinking it's all about money. But I think employees are much more quick to respond to being trusted, to being uh, trained. Uh, that helps them to understand that the employer is committed to the employment, employment relationship and the employee. It helps the employee to feel like they're providing something valuable. So as you hire employees, try to identify the task that you can delegate to employees to help them grow it helped them be more satisfied and more committed to the job. Stephen Covey discussed reasons to delegate. Trust is the highest form of human motivation. It brings out the very best in people. But it takes time and patience. And it doesn't preclude the necessity to train and develop people so that their competency can rise to the level of that trust. Sometimes you can delegate too much to an employee. You need to be cautious about when that happens, and you need to take responsibility for it to address any problems that may occur and to help train the employee so that they can become or, or develop that skill to handle that task in the future. Doctors also must remember that they remain ultimately responsible. Even though they may delegate tasks to employees, it's ultimately the doctor's responsibility. Delegation is not the same thing as abdication.
the basic legal principle is that an employer is liable for the negligence of its employees when the employee is acting within the scope of their employment, even if the employer was not personally involved or was not personally negligent. So as an employer, you need to remember that you have responsibility to supervise and oversee that things are done correctly, even though you have delegated the task to an employee. Uh, Stephen Covey in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, discusses a process for delegating. Now, I'm not going to try to duplicate what he discusses in his book, but just generally understand that uh, uh, delegation requires more than just saying, do this, do that. The best way to do to delegate a, a task to an employee is to identify the desired results. What's the end result we're trying to get to? Set up some guidelines for the employee to accomplish the job effectively, provide them with the resources to do the job, hold them accountable if the job is not done, and provide consequences. If the job is done correctly, reward them appropriately. If it's done inappropriately, discipline them appropriately. So for example, if you want to have your, your office staff get to the office early before the first patient appointment, turn the lights on, start the coffee pot, or do whatever it is you, you expect them to do, what's the desired result? What's the reason for wanting all that done? You want the office to look open and welcoming when that first patient arrives, not like they're, 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 the staff is rushing around trying to get ready. You want it to look like they're ready for that first patient when they come in. That's the desired result. And the guideline might be that you expect your employees to arrive 30 minutes before the first patient does. And that gives them time to do any straightening up that needs to be done and to get the office really ready and to be themselves ready when that first patient arrives. Uh, resources, if you expect your staff to arrive 30 minutes before the first appointment, certainly you should compensate them for that 30 minutes. Uh, holding them accountable in the consequences. If they do the job well, be sure it's rewarded. If they're not doing the job, be sure they understand they're not doing the job and how they can be more effective. As a doctor, you need to remember that you are subject to state rules for delegation. The rules are going to vary somewhat from state to state. A couple of general principles that I think are pretty universal. You're only going to be allowed to delegate to somebody who is qualified and properly trained. So depending on the task you're asking the person to do, uh, that may require some additional training or some additional qualifications before they're directed to do that. Now the training may be formal training, like in education, or it may be uh, uh, on the job training where you've explained and demonstrated how to perform something. If you want to have a person, an employee, assist you with uh, uh, collecting patient histories, you probably want to show them how it's done, see them do it a few times, and then even after you've delegated the task to them when you, you meet with patients, you want to follow up and ask a few questions to be sure that the patient history was taken appropriately and, and is complete. If the state requires some type of education or certification, like for performing x-rays or, or using the x-ray machine, be sure your employee has that certification or education before they perform that task. The level of supervision required may vary depending upon the task being performed. Sometimes it's necessary that the doctor be on premises and available immediately to intervene if the employee has problems. Sometimes it is okay if the doctor is only on call so that the uh, employee can call the doctor if they're having problems and the doctor can arrive quickly if they need to. Doctor also needs to pay attention to the number of persons that they can safely supervise. If you find yourself overwhelmed in not being able to keep up of what your employees are up to, you're probably trying to supervise too many employees and you need to develop some better systems or maybe bring in some other doctors to help in your practice. 
In addition to the state rules that govern who you can delegate to and how you need to supervise them, pay attention to the billing rules as well. There are some situations where the billing rules require a higher level of supervision than the state rules might require. If you're billing under a particular code, you may have to be on premises while that service is being performed. There are certain jobs that should not be delegated, particularly those jobs that require the professional judgment of a chiropractor. You should not have a layperson making a diagnosis or a treatment plan. Certainly should not have a layperson perform a chiropractic adjustment or a manipulation. They should not be performing x-rays unless the state allows certified uh, rad techs to perform x-rays and your employee is a certified rad tech. Employees or laypersons should not be uh, required to do any task that requires an exercise of clinical judgment. And lastly, I think it just goes without saying, but, but just to be sure, uh, you should not delegate acts that are outside the scope of chiropractic. Uh, don't try to supervise somebody to do something that requires a license other than a chiropractic license. Also be careful about doctors who have had their chiropractic license suspended or revoked. Do not delegate to them in a way that helps them practice while their license is being is, is under suspension or revocation. You would become responsible for that and that could be very difficult to explain to the Board of Chiropractic Examiners. So let me kind of wrap this discussion up with a few discussions or a few comments about leadership. Part of what you do as a doctor building a clinic is you're going to lead your team of employees and you need to get the best out of those employees. Uh, Harvey Firestone, the founder of Firestone Tires, said the growth and development of people is the highest calling of leadership. You want to select good employees, but you also want to help those employees grow and become better employees. Uh, General Pershing said a competent leader can get efficient service from poor troops, while on the contrary, an incapable leader can demoralize the best of troops. Being a good leader, setting the tone, providing the training, providing the supervision, providing the support for your employees, all those things can help you become a more effective leader and build a better practice. And you can take some hope in Vince Lombardi's uh, comment, leaders are made, they are not born. They are made by hard effort, which is the price which all of us must pay to achieve any goal that is worthwhile. Some people, I think, mistakenly believe that leaders are just born to be leaders. And if you haven't been born to be a leader, you can't be one. But the, the message of Coach Lombardi is very clear. With the right amount of work and hard effort, anyone can become a leader. And even though you may not feel like a leader as a, as a chiropractic student or as a new graduate from chiropractic college, you can certainly develop those leadership skills to lead your employees to develop a healthy chiropractic practice.